And he finishes this second letter in chapter 3 with these final uh, exhortations, um, reminders. And he's, I, I love what he does in verse 8 because he sets this beautiful perspective, the difference between the world's expertise versus the knowledge and the perfection of God's uh, uh, wisdom. And the reason he does this is because there are people who are complaining like, well, Jesus hasn't returned again, so clearly I'm not going to be a Christian because this guy that you claim to worship is not keeping his promises. We see that in the first couple of verses. And Peter's trying to explain there's a difference between our limited worldly perspective and God's divine chronology. So he says, but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day to us. Basically, he, he's doing this comparison of a thousand earthly years is as one day. Now, I don't think there's a, a celestial calendar up on the wall of heaven that is exactly one day compared to our exact 1,000 years. He's, he's using this analogy. It's as a thousand years. He's trying to prove a point that you and I who wear wristwatches and have clock calendars on our walls, we, we measure time very differently. We see progression of time in a very different context than God does. And it's this invitation for us to trust God in his timing. We've shared this before, but uh, Elder Neil A. Maxwell said something along the lines of, isn't it strange how you and I who wear wristwatches try to counsel he who governs cosmic clocks when it comes to matters of timing in our life? How many times have we been frustrated when we haven't gotten what we wanted when we wanted it versus letting go, casting that burden at the feet of the Lord and letting him care for us and say, I'll carry this burden with thee as long as you require. My belief is that for the faithful, for the, the disciples of Christ that are on the covenant path doing the best they can to love the Lord as imperfect as it may be, that God will not let you suffer one moment longer than is absolutely necessary in order to refine the gold that is in you or that is you. That that, that suffering or that, that difficulty or even that persecution, it can serve this beautiful refining purpose, but God doesn't want you to suffer just for suffering's sake. And so, if we take that perspective of that pain you're enduring, whether it be mental or physical or relational, it, it can have a divine, beautifully purifying outcome if we keep our focus fixed on the Savior.